The Economist. Thailand's yellow shirts eat, talk, pray, revolt. A political movement desperately tries to stay relevant. The elegant avenue surrounding the Prime Minister's offices in the capital are the scene of the latest confrontation between the government and the country's seasoned street fighting men, women and children. This time it is the turn of the ultra-nationalist yellow shirts, the People's Alliance for Democracy, PAD, rather than their rivals, the left-wing red shirts. The protest camp which has sprang up over the past few weeks chokes off traffic access to both the National Assembly building and the offices of the Prime Minister Abhisit Vijayjiva. Beneath awnings, hundreds of tents line the pavements in neat rows. There are kitchens and stalls selling trinkets of such revolutionary role models as Muanda Gaddafi. Buddhist monks mill around. Long live the king, the stickers on musicians' guitar cases proclaim. In the yellow shirt camp, they do not mean Elvis. Yet the camp's existence speaks more of the yellow shirt's growing desperation than of their power. The movement has had a phenomenal run over the past few years, helping topple two elected governments, starting with that of the billionaire populist Taksin Shinawatra in 2006. But in recent months, they have become divorced from their natural ally, the Democrat Party, of Mr. Abhisid, and they have suffered splits and a dip in popular support. As much as anything, the protest camp is a cry for attention. The immediate reason for the sit-in is a recent flare-up of a border dispute with Cambodia involving an ancient Khmer temple, Pravihā. The two countries traded gunfire two weeks ago. The yellow shirts feel that Mr. Abbasid has acted weakly. Government moves to resolve the issue peacefully leave the PAD cold. On February the 22nd, Indonesian observers were allowed to monitor a ceasefire. Yet this time the PAD is not tapping into popular anger and grievance. The few thousand campers are far smaller in number than the tens of thousands who swamped government buildings and closed down the airport in 2008. With elections possible this year, the government calculates that it is now strong enough to dispense with yellow shirt support. A booming economy allows Mr. Abhisit to indulge voters with populist handouts. He no longer has use for the unpredictable, sometimes violent, street politics of the yellow shirts. As a result, says Titinam Ponsudirak of Chulalongkorn University, their PAD feels abandoned by the very government that it helped to put into power. As formal parties gear up for elections, Thai democratic politics are returning to a semblance of normality. That too ill-serves a protest movement like the Yellow Shirts. This week, the government unexpectedly released seven opposition redshirt leaders on bail. They had spent nine months in detention for their part in anti-government rallies that ended in a bloody police assault last May. The gesture is aimed at reducing street protests on both sides of the colour divide. Given their record, nobody's writing off the yellow shirts yet, but for the moment their influence looks as if it has peaked.